Good morning, guys. Good morning. Guys, today we will be doing a review, uh, a two-figure review on my Tank Buster, my G.I. Joe Tank Buster, and my G.I. Joe Navy Crash Crew. I got these guys back in the early uh, part of the 2000s. I believe uh, my uh, Navy Crash Crew, I got him around 2001. And um, my uh, Tank Buster was also a part of the um, Army Rangers collection. Uh, got him around, around 2003. So let's get let's just jump right off into this. We'll start with the uh, Navy Crash Crew, GI Joe. As you can see, this guy is uh, loaded with accessories. He's got his tank down there, breathing tank, axe. He's got his uh, fire repellent suit. Um, this guy has tons of equipment. Let's go up top here. Check his equipment list out. Proximity coat, proximity pants, suspenders, blah, blah, blah. Life vest, cap, helmet, label, sheet, boots, air tank. This guy's this guy is is, is loaded. Uh, once again. You're talking about great artwork on these guys. Uh, and this is back when they got the new superposable G.I. Joe figure. So the body had more articulation to it. So, I mean, as you can see, it's, it's cool because you, looking back over the history of how G.I. Joe has evolved. And this is in the early 2000s. This was a big deal. You know, the new posable G.I. Joe, super posable G.I. Joe. So it was a big deal. I mean, he had more articulation to his body. You could put him in different poses. You see, he's got his stickers and stuff up there. A little closer look at the face, the helmet. Um, once again, everything is, um, I keep everything in the box. Let's get him turned around. You guys can see the back. See his back. Oh, here's a good side shot. Good side shot, and this is how he would look if he took uh, all of his equipment off. These guys are well made, well dressed. Let's get around to the back side of there. Once again, they have. Uh, you know, beautiful storylines uh, on these figures, on these particular, on the particular branch that these gels came from. Once again, a blown up part of that great artwork that you saw on the front. Um, let's see, this guy was made in uh, 2001. Just beautifully done beautifully made um, when he came out I, ha I had to have him I just I thought the suit alone was unique uh, to G.I. Joe I didn't have any G.I. Joe's with this particular outfit or it was remotely dressed like this so that kind of stuck out uh, price point on this guy when I bought him back in 2001 was somewhere around $29. So he, he, he wasn't cheap, too cheap then. Now I, 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 I couldn't tell you uh, what you can get this guy for. Maybe $50 or $60. It depends. Uh, rarity wise, I, 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 I don't think he's too rare. I don't think he's super rare like the, the John R. Fox uh, or, or some other Joes that are just limited and very difficult to find but um he's um 
I haven't seen him a lot around. But uh, just a fun Joe to have uh, for collectors that, that, that enjoy taking the guys out of the box and, you know, posing them and putting them in their, uh, you know, on their shelves for collect, you know, collection purposes. Um, I'm sure, you, you know, you have a lot of fun putting this equipment on and stuff. But, uh, you know, these guys, for me, the way I do it is it's, it's more of a historic, historical value um, viewpoint to it. I like to be able to. I, I've always told uh, my fellow collectors that, you know, when they ask me, uh, MIB Master, why, why, why keep them in the box? And I share with them, uh, you know, back going, dating back to when I was a kid. To me, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, uh, a bridge. It's a time machine from my childhood to my adulthood of collecting. Um, it's a, it bridges the gap for me to be able to see these guys. You know, you're talking about once again. 16 17 year old figures and stuff that's you know that's been kept and preserved you know and in, in it in their entirety uh it, it's for me it's it's just it's just cool that way it's hard to explain but i guess anybody that that keeps their their guys mint in box this is you know they would understand it So we're gonna move over. We're gonna move over to our uh, tank buster, GI Joe. And you're you're talking about equipment galore. That guy has a ton of stuff. Look at the once again the craftsmanship on these figures are just unparalleled it's just it's amazing he's got his machine gun he's got for his uh his his cannon his bazooka he's got the big ballistic missiles he's got another uh canteen he's got his pouch equipment down there he's got another hat he's got his uh he's wearing all of his uh he's got his white scully cap on his uh, winter apparel on he's got another canteen he's got the h harness all over that he's got a he's got a knife up there this guy is simply loaded with equipment loaded with equipment once again you're looking at beautiful artwork I would like to know the artist that does the work for Hasbro and for G.I. Joe once again it's just this is the type of stuff that would just leap off of the toy store shelves at you being a collector Walking down the aisle in Toys R Us or Target or Walmart or wherever you, you would see these guys when they existed back then in the toy stores. It, it was the artwork. It, it was the craftsmanship of these boxes that caught your eye. They were truly eye candy back then and you just couldn't resist. I don't know any collector and that was the thrill of the hunt back then. We would run around and try to find these figures and we'll be covering some chase figures from the er the late 90s uh, later on in some more reviews some... but any collector will tell you that was the fun part of collecting these guys collecting G.I. Joe to see these guys on the toy store shelves you know now you have to get them off of eBay, Amazon, and different uh, Coswell collectibles and different places like that. It, it's it's cool, but it just is it's taking the fun 
the thrill out of the hunt. You know, waking up in the morning and driving around to these different toy stores and finding this guy on a toy store shelf was just amazing. Uh, I, I can't explain the, the thrill. Um, I bought this guy from Toys R Us back in 2001 and the charge that I got was just amazing when I you know seeing him on a toy store shelf and let's turn him around once again he's got tank buster the whole story behind the army rangers that was another just a cool thing about the box down here you got you know what Joe was next on line to be bought or was going to be sold so that 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 would get your collecting juices flowing because it's like hey here's another guy I got to get that guy now great storylines on these guys and look at just once again a blown up version of the artwork that was on the front of the cover you get all of it on the back just beautiful artwork more detailed let's get you a closer view of this guy just phenomenal just phenomenal beautiful beautiful let's turn around let's do one more quick take of him of everything just a quick look at this guy's equipment sealed up real nice he's got all his fasteners on him as you can see I've never taken any of my guys out but I could imagine that those fasteners have to be a pain in the neck or you know what taking all these fasteners off of this guy to get him free him from the box <laughs> that alone would be a headache that alone would keep me away from doing that <laughs> but that's the the Tank Buster, the Army Rangers collection, Tank Buster. Guys, I think that's going to about do it for now. I'd like to thank you guys for checking out. My video, I got more in store for you. By all means, Keep coming back. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Until next time, always remember, guys, keep collecting.